Hi, in this video, we'll take a look at how you can set up the Docker Engine REST API so that it can be invoked from a remote machine. Now, this is different than, uh, say, for example, using the Docker command line argument and specifying a host uh, name. Uh, this is um, completely different. It's uh, how you can invoke uh, Docker commands from a remote system uh, using the REST interface. As a prerequisite, I'm assuming that you already have an environment uh, with uh, Docker installed. I'm not going to go through how you can install Docker. Uh, however, uh, this is a quick glimpse of the various steps that I've taken to install Docker on Ubuntu. Um, I've already covered the installation of Docker in other videos if you want to take a look at or uh, have a look at the description of this video. Uh, the video is primarily going to be focused around two things. Um, number one, how we can set up the REST API itself. Um, and keep in mind that the REST interface is not enabled by default. And that's uh, the extra steps that we need to do to enable the REST API. And then finally, we'll take a look at how you can actually invoke these uh, APIs from a remote machine. And specifically, we'll take a look at some very basic uh, REST API endpoints, how you can uh, see images running on a Docker host and um, how we can inspect some of the metadata uh, of uh, running containers. And interestingly, how we can uh, start and stop containers remotely um, using the REST interface. Now, that's uh, just the tip of the iceberg. The document obviously covers uh, various other details and various other endpoints that's bound to be uh, quite useful. Uh, however, for purposes of the video, we'll focus on setting up the REST API and running some basic commands. Uh, so let's dive in. All right, so the first thing we need to do is make sure that uh, Docker is working and everything's um, configured properly, uh, just the Docker engine itself. So just run a basic Docker command and it should tell you if it's working or uh, you can run the hello world program. Obviously, um, I haven't uh, completed all the necessary setups, which is why um, I'm still having to run it as a pseudo user and haven't added to the correct groups, but uh, that's uh, that's not going to stop us from proceeding on with the REST API setup itself. So. Uh, what we need to do is uh, edit one of the files. Uh, so that's this file here. So nano, choose the editor of your preference and uh, find, uh, one second, I should have done sudo, um, file is owned by root. Um, so let's go ahead and find that exec start. So um, depending on the version of Docker that you're running, um, this line might look slightly different, but uh, fundamentally you're looking for uh, the execute start and at the very end, uh, do not uh, remove that. What you need to do is add an additional endpoint uh, that's uh, TCP and uh, feel free to choose a port of your uh, preference. So let's go ahead and add that here and save. Um, once we have done that, we will then need to um, reload the daemon. And um, after that, uh, let's also restart uh, Docker. Okay. Uh, so everything's um, all set. Uh, this should have enabled the REST API interface. And uh, let's... Um, Let's run some basic commands uh, and see how uh, we can work with the API. Uh, but instead of doing it on the local uh, machine, I'm going to run it on a different machine. So let me log in. Okay, so I've uh, connected to a different uh, machine here. So at the top, we have uh, the node that's running the Docker, uh, the Docker host. And uh, this is another um, Ubuntu machine. And um, now that we have the REST API configured, um, we can actually run some curl commands. Um, so as an example, if I run, um, uh, again, this is the IP address of the Docker host. And as you may remember, we expose port 5555. And here we can run this command to see uh, the list of uh, images uh, that are running um, on the server. So same thing, I can do it here. So sudo docker. Um, images. Uh, so here have uh, two images. We have the hello world images and uh, the Postgres uh, SQL uh, images. So here you can see we have the Postgres and uh, the hello world. 
uh, latest. Um, so that's an example of how we can use a simple endpoint. Uh, we can also take a look at um, any running container. So for now, um, there shouldn't be any. So if I run a uh, curl, you can see that uh, there are no running containers. Uh, again, we can, uh, if I run a Docker PS, I uh, should see nothing. So let's go ahead and um, run a container. So using um, the Postgres, so let's, uh, um, so now if I run uh, Docker PS, um, there's a running container and sure enough, if I run uh, the curl command, it should give us uh, details um, about the running container. So again, for details, uh, you'll need to look at the API reference um, uh, for all the metadata and uh, all the various parameters. Uh, so I'm skimming through much of the details right now. Uh, what's also interesting is uh, now that we um, we uh, we have a running container, we can actually start and stop the container. Um, so again, uh, since we have given a container a name, uh, we can uh, then invoke uh, curl commands uh, with the container's name. Uh, so here we are trying to stop a container um, and uh, we specify a timeout of uh, five seconds and we are basically doing a post command um, or, or a curl post. So if I go to stop uh, the API, uh, you can see the details here. So here uh, it provides us uh, the details of the query parameters or so the details that I'm sending in. Uh, so the number of seconds that is waiting before it kills the container. So here again, uh, if I run Docker PS, uh, you can see that we have a container that's currently running. Uh, if I run uh, the curl command, uh, then there's, uh, yep, um, that container is no longer running. However, uh, if I run dash A, you can see that it's uh, it's stopped. Uh, so then uh, if we want to uh, run the, or start the container again, uh, it's the same command and uh, instead of stop, let's uh, run start. Okay. And now if I run Docker PS again, you can see that the container is uh, now started again. Uh, so with that, um, uh, I'm, I'll wrap up this video. So what we have seen is a simple example of how we can enable a REST API interface uh, to Docker. Uh, keep in mind that uh, the steps that I followed is uh, exposing that API uh, without a TLS or without any security. Obviously it's great when uh, it's contained within a network where end users do not have direct access. Uh, otherwise um, that's bound to cause a lot of security concerns. So. Uh, make sure that you use uh, your discretion around your network security uh, before uh, exposing uh, the Docker REST API. Hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.